Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to TechPoint. Today our guest is Sindre, the CEO of SalesScreen. Hello. Hello Christian, nice to be here. Nice to meet you. Please tell us what your company does. SalesScreen is a sales gamification platform. So imagine you have an outbound motion in your business and uh, that process is working pretty well. Well, at that stage, you need to do a minimum set of activities every day, every week, every month, and that's going to lead you towards those business outcomes you're driving towards. That's your engine. When you place sales screen gamification um, into the mix, you're kind of upgrading your engine. You're going to do more outbound activities and you're going to uh, get a better quality because of our motivational elements inside the tool and uh, how we help people facilitate one-to-one -one data driven conversations and really keep everyone accountable and in the know of how they're doing. So it's like the ultimate toolkit for managers to motivate teams to go. Awesome. And what do you say is the biggest problem that you solve? I guess the biggest problem is very relevant right now. I mean, how do you get people excited to get to work every day and put into it, you know, the effort and yeah. how do you motivate sales teams these days? It's, it's a tough market. And, you know, there's a saying that says, you know, 2023 uh, surviving is thriving. And uh, we've seen <laughs> 51,000 people lose their jobs in like the, yeah. the big tech uh, companies of late. So, you know, how do you, keep the remaining people excited to go to work and motivated to actually put in that effort, which is required to get the goal. I mean, these days you need to do twice as much as you did last year uh, and you're probably going to be paid less. So yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I understand. Uh, can you walk us through the process? The process of uh, how we gamify uh, Absolutely. a sales yeah. process? Yeah, yeah, sure. So you always start uh, by having some business outcomes. So let's say uh, you're a software company and since you're interviewing SaaS uh, founders and you have a BDR team that's uh, supposed to, to build pipeline, uh, you know, the ultimate yeah. goal of the business is to create more pipeline. Um, and then uh, you kind of like take that goal and you break it into a funnel of activities. And uh, the goal of this exercise is to really to dive into the actions that's required of the individuals on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. And for like an BDR working, let's say an outreach or sales loft, that might be, you know, adding context to a sequence because that starts all the tasks that you're supposed to do every day, like uh, cold calling or connecting with someone on LinkedIn or, you know, writing up, uh, making a personalized video. Yeah. Uh, and then you have goals that you want them to do uh, consistently. And many of our clients in the saw space, at least, uh, they might, might want to have like 60 to 100 cold calls a day uh, and also other tasks. So now you start to have like a very dialed in sales process and how to get to that business outcome. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when you can start to capture that data, funnel it through sales screen and create competition where, you know, mm. people can engage and where we level the playing field, not yeah. only leaderboards, but also like lottery for instance so every time you book a meeting you get a ticket and by the end of the week there's a raffle and you kind of like yeah. pull out uh, or spin the wheel to see who wins you could have uh, achievements that creates consistently the uh, consistency let's say 20 contacts added to sequence in a day gives you a badge that pops up everywhere people will recognize it second day they do it they're on a streak you know now they yeah, start yeah. to build up a streak and then um, suddenly when you're on 20 working days in a row, you've added 20 contacts, you're, you're kind of like feeling loss aversion. You don't want to lose out on this streak. So yeah. you continue <laughs> to do the same habit over and over again. And suddenly you're building consistency around the actions that people can influence themselves and not only, you know, uh, what, uh, the outcomes are, because that's obviously what we're driving towards, but we're getting people self-determined to do better and. Uh, meet up every day and, you know, have some fun uh, doing the, the cold outreach and the hard work that's required. So uh, that's a bit of the process. And obviously we have tons of game elements in our platform yeah. that makes, you know, the actions fun and exciting. That's so am amazing. Well, <laughs> well, I'm impressed. Uh, and what did you say are your top three features? Uh, well, I mean, the TV visualization is probably one because if you don't know how you're tracking towards goal, uh, you know, then you don't have accountability and you don't know what you should be doing because your goal is not visible. So like visualizing that on a TV and also on our mobile app, to, yeah, if you're working the field, it's, it's really important. And once you know where you're at, 
uh, then you can start to, to create some bumps in your performance. And one of the, the key features there is just probably competitions. So we have like mm -hmm. hundreds of templates. You can spin up a, a meeting competition or a point weighted competition or, you know, a treasure hunt where you get to open a chest and steal from others. Fun, fun games like that. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's super fun. So that's probably the second most important uh, kind of like feature. Uh, I would say the third one probably is uh, either achievements or the social feed, because like if you want to be self-determined as an individual, you need to feel mastery, you need to feel autonomy, and you also need to be connected to the rest of the team. So now, like, if you're working from home, uh, when your wins is being automatically surfaced and recognized across the board, other people can go in there and, and give you, you know, you know, a gif or a like or a comment and kind of uh, back you up and you also feel and feed off the energy that other people are succeeding so I will do it too and that's so important to kind of create that connectedness so I say uh, either that or the achievements because of the streak concept and like celebrating the smaller wins along the yeah. journey to that big pipeline goal or <laughs> sales target it's also important to, to kind of get you motivated on a day-to-day -day basis not only like oh yeah you close the biggest deal ever that's when you're getting the praise no 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 you need to do it consistently all the time yeah. to kind of feel that energy building up. So, yeah. <laughs> and what is the pricing for a sales screen? Uh, the price point, it depends. If you want a recognition package, uh, which typically gives you the TV visualization, the app, the feed, you know, all the celebration things going on. You also get the reward shop where you can uh, kind of engage and, and, and accumulate coins that you can exchange for, for rewards. Um, that's kind of like uh, $250 uh, per user per year. Uh, if you want a full gamification platform with all the achievements, the competitions and everything that goes into it, uh, then it's $500 typically per, per seat per year. Uh, obviously, it is a bit of a discount based on volume. We have customers yeah. all the way up until I think the biggest one probably has 19,000 seats on our platform. Wow. Uh, so you can imagine they have a slightly less uh, per per user yeah. price point than the ones who are like 15, 20 people. That's great. That's great. And can you show us some of your integrations? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that? Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, if you can share with us some of your integrations. So the tools that uh, the sales screens integrate with. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, we have a, a full list on our website, but we obviously integrate with most of the CRM systems out there like Salesforce, HubSpot, Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, we also integrate with uh, most of the engagement tools like sales loft and, and outreach. Uh, you know, our goal is to capture the activities, the actions that people do on a recurring basis. Uh, we have some other key integrations. For instance, if you're working with field sales and you, you know, you're knocking doors, uh, then you need to have an engagement tool like sales rabbit. Uh, so those are a strong partner of ours uh, in that field. If you're working in like a call center or like recruitment, then we have uh, specific uh, niche CRM or integrations in those spaces like iSales CRM and VisRT and yeah, tons of different types of systems. So Vincere. Um, so yeah, we have a long list of integrations that we built up uh, since launch in March 2014. But uh, we also still have quite a lot of customers manually inputting their data either through spreadsheets or, you know, having their reps use the mobile app or web app to, to input it uh, live in, in the system itself. Okay. And how competitive is the sales gamification space? Um, it's, it's competitive. I mean, there's always uh, smaller uh, vendors popping up uh, here and there. I guess we are uh, the safe bet that's been around and uh, it's uh, one of the biggest. Uh, but we have uh, a competitor in the US, uh, which is um, leaning quite much into coaching as well, called Ambition. Uh, we have a different one, which is more, uh, I guess, targeted uh, towards SMBs, but it's called Spinify. Uh, they're based out of uh, Australia. Uh, we have like a, a different one in Denmark called Plecto, which is more, uh, I would say, business intelligence based or like dashboards, but still have gamification. So there's quite a lot of uh, different types of vendors out there. Um, and uh, uh, it's, it's competitive, but, you know, uh, I would say in any new space, uh, like the, the sales gamification, I would say is, uh, it's good to have many competitors because then they're, they're, you know, uh, spreading the gospel and, uh, educating the market yeah. on the benefits of, uh, gamification. Absolutely. But what is the first company to, to start in this space? 
Uh, I guess we were one of the first ones. Uh, remember when we started, we didn't really, uh, we, we said gamification, you know, and, and nobody ever heard about gamification at the time. Yeah. Uh, so they were like, what? Uh, and we eventually were like, well, you know, we're a replacement for the whiteboard and the bell that people ring when they close deals. Yeah. Uh, because we have YouTube celebrations going off, going off on the TV screens when you close a deal, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> so it kind of became uh, a replacement uh, or like a digital whiteboard and uh, sales bell concept until people were more educated about gamification and we could uh, explain to them that's actually what we're doing. So, you know, um, the, the market has matured. Now people know what gamification is. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I still, you know, see there's a, see it as a great opportunity. And in most cases, uh, it, it's not like we're, we're meeting uh, a, a lot of competitors. It's more educating and, and getting them uh, sold on the concept. But when did you start the company exactly? Uh, we actually started as a consultancy company back in 2011. Uh, so that's mm. when I founded it uh, as a un university student on computer science. Um, and then um, took a couple of iterations before we kind of found the sales screen product, uh, which was launched 1st of March, 2014. And how did you come up with the idea? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to take all praise for that. Uh, we actually <laughs> had a fairly amazing customer uh, back in Norway, where this company was uh, founded, mm -hmm. uh, which um, used our tool at the time, a corporate messaging application to send out like a message every time somebody closed a deal to create like a bus or energy in the field sales and call centers. Yeah. And they sent tens of thousands of messages and, and then they started to ask us like, Hey, could we add in the sale directly in your mobile app? And, and that message could include like, you know, a leaderboard of the day and how much, how you're trending towards your target. And we're like, wow, that's, you know, that's a great idea. We yeah. never <laughs> looked at this use case of like motivating salespeople through this notification. Yeah. And we're like, okay, uh, and then we, uh, at one point they asked, Hey, you guys have so much sales data on us not right now. It would be amazing if you could get those messages, you know, those leaderboards up on TV screens in the call centers. And we're like, wow, that's brilliant. And we did that. And suddenly, uh, the jungle telegraph just, uh, hit and people started to call us uh, out of the blue and saying, Hey, we saw this amazing tool with <laughs> I have the tiger playing and stuff. And like, we want to buy it too. <laughs> um, and we just pivoted hard uh, and went all in. Yeah, this shows the importance of feedback. Well, wow. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah. And how big is your team right now? Uh, we're probably around 60 people now. And have you raised any funds? Uh, yes, we did. We did raise a small round in 2018, a couple of million dollars, and then we've added a bit here and there. So over the lifespan, uh, probably close to 7 million, including all debt. So. Seven million dollars raise, seven million dollars ARR. So it's kind of like uh, dollar for a dollar. <laughs> nice. And um, what has been your best growth tactic? Ah, yeah, the best growth tactic. Um, I would say the product itself. Uh, by having the TV visualization, uh, yeah. obviously a lot of people saw that uh, when they entered other office spaces and then were curious on like, what is this? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. amazing. You see the leaderboards and competitions ongoing and oh, wow, there's a YouTube celebration, you know? Uh, and they, uh, so we, you know, the first years we did everything just came inbound because of that. So it was uh, uh, building a vi virality loop uh, or whatever you want to call that into your product is, is always uh, smart and We've uh, tried to build on that as well. Now we allow uh, reps to share their uh, achievements in social media. So you kind of get like a sales screen certified achievement if uh, when you, you share that uh, out on your profile or on the LinkedIn feed, uh, hmm. which is, uh, is great because uh, they have uh, probably hundreds, if not thousands of followers. So uh, it really does create brand awareness, brand awareness and spread. So um, I would say build something into the product and uh, that's what we've done and that's been great for us. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and uh, what has been your biggest challenge since starting the company? Uh, I mean, the biggest challenge obviously came under COVID uh, because we had uh, uh, a bigger reliance on the TV visualization. A lot of customers bought us because of the TV visualization. That was a key feature and suddenly they were working from home. Uh, didn't take long until we realized that was actually a great opportunity for us and we had our best growth ever. 
uh, due to the fact that people felt disconnected and wanted to get more of that yeah. connectedness that they used to have in the office. So it was a silver lining in it, but you know, <laughs> under that time frame, we were like, okay, we were actually looking into raising a bit more money, and then suddenly this feature isn't as important anymore. Uh, so we kind of had to shift, and then we went back into the office, and all, and this whole economic downturn uh, came knocking on our doors. So then again, our funding plans got uh, derailed uh, yet again. So kind of like managing just uh, growth uh, and, uh, and efficiency has been quite tough uh, in a market where uh, one second, you know, VCs favor growth and the other second you need to have efficiency and that those transitions are pretty brutal. Uh, so that's been a big challenge. Yeah, that's a good story. Um, and what's your future vision for sales screen? I think that every revenue team out there really needs to have at least one tool in their ecosystem that, that talks human, <laughs> you know, these days with chat GPT and AI and machine learning and everything, uh, having something that just captures the human emotions and try to make work a bit more fun and exciting and, you know, build people up from a psychological point of view. Uh, I definitely believe that this should be uh, a part of the ecosystem everywhere. Uh, so we're building out this space uh, and we're going to keep on building it until everyone has a sales screen in, in, in their tech stack. Awesome. And I love to hear your backstory. So how you started your career even before sales screen? Well, I did start pretty young as a 22 year old, I founded this company. So um, it turns out uh, that was uh, always the plan, I would say, you know, I was a uh, pretty much a, a tech geek from uh, age of 13, I was coding in assembly level. I hacked my high school and middle school and uh, went all over when it came to like programming and computer science. But I realized like, you know, it was the, the challenges and overcoming it that was really motivating me. So the ultimate challenge was obviously to create my own business. So I started to prepare towards that um, and uh, did a lot of like side jobs and IT consultancy work and made some mobile apps and did all well, experimented with uh, many different things yeah. uh, until I just said, well, let's just get going. Uh, I'm surrounded by brilliant people at the university I was at and, you know, I could get them uh, into the team before the big tech companies come and steal them. So, <laughs> you know, the timing was good as well. Um, yeah. And of course, the student loan was paying my <laughs> the food and putting food on the table. So, so I could actually, you know, start the bootstrap and did that until uh, 2018 when I raised money for the first time. So, um, yeah, it's been a, a lot of sales screen, but, um, it's been a, it's been a great journey and constantly developing and learning new things, especially as I, um, br bridged over to the U S and, and moved to New York and like, uh, really, uh, been able to, to bridge that cultural gap between Europe and, and the U S that's been exciting. And I saw that, uh, you're an angel advisor. Uh, angel investor in a lot of startups. So I was curious to know what are your best uh, learnings from that or yeah, your criteria a, for, uh, for investing? <laughs> it's been a tremendous uh, journey actually, because uh, I, lo I love giving back uh, after uh, learning the hard way for a long time, uh, but also, you know, just going in and, and feeding a bit of uh, that energy and getting uh, to see some of that creativity firsthand. And in many cases that that's also benefiting our company. Yes, we're at the later growth stage, but there these startups, they are really pushing the edge on technology and what's possible. And sometimes, you know, they, they might be using some uh, concepts or, or patterns or technologies that's better than ours, and then we can adopt it. So, uh, it's been good. Uh, obviously I started to invest, uh, fairly late, like around 2019, 2020. Uh, so right now, uh, they're, they're all, uh, alive. So, so far, so good. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it's tough times, uh, for startups for sure. So, uh, if they can pull through this, um, uh, drought or whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, those companies are, are going to be super strong. So, um, so far so good, but yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously is a good reminder of, of how brutal it is in those early <laughs> days. It's, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, and what's your best piece of advice for founders? I think that, uh, you need to have patience. So like, uh, breed with your stomach and, uh, and endure, um, you know, founding a company is a marathon. It's not a sprint. 
So definitely just uh, make sure psychologically that you, you understand that it might take longer than you expect. Um, but, you know, the return is always, it's going to be there if you, if you keep at it. But um, more of late, I would also say, you know, dare to select away stuff. Uh, for instance, uh, when you go out and target a customer base, be as targeted as possible. Really hone in on your ideal customer profile and dare to say no um, and, and focus because the more precise you are on the personas and the companies that you're selling to, uh, it e the easier it, it's going to be to scale. And you can always branch out with new products or new you know, verticals later, uh, but getting that snowball rolling, uh, it's just so important and it's easier if you focus quite a lot. And I have one last question. What's your favorite software apart from sales screen? I, uh, a favorite software? Yeah, the software that you use daily and you enjoy and you'd recommend to, to other people. I would say it's a bit boring, but I mean, Slack is amazing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the way you can collaborate asynchronously and integrate with so many different things. That's great. Um, give you a couple of other bonuses. Again, boring, but Salesforce is such a, a great tool because it's so flexible. So if you have good people, you can really adapt all your processes to work inside that CRM. It's a big investment, but when you get there, it's really worth it. Uh, and then finally, I would say Notion is, is uh, becoming uh, more and more important for us because we have put more or less everything in there. Um, sales screen training academies and sales screen uh, product uh, processes and uh, you know all collaboration and playbooks and all of that. So it's, a, it's really a, a decent hub. It's kind of like the old SharePoint for, for those hmm. who are dinosaurs like me, but uh, just <laughs> yeah. better. Is there anything else that you want to tell us today on the podcast? Um, hang in there, you know, uh, better days are coming. Uh, it's probably going to be another four to six months uh, until uh, the tides are, are turning. But if you look for, uh, and, and learn from history, uh, bear markets, when things are going down, is always much shorter than bull markets uh, and rarely much more than a year, year and a half. So. Uh, I do believe that uh, uh, if, if you stick to uh, and, and believe in your process and believe in your company uh, and you're able to survive, you're going to thrive after. So you're going to get uh, not only uh, the fruit from the labors that you put in now and everyone that listens to you, but they can't buy it because of the market. Mm -hmm. They're going to come back once things turn at the same time as you build up a new pipeline. So you're going to get like a double whammy when things turn and then it's really going to go fast again. So, you know, it's, yeah, keep at it. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be good in the end. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. <laughs>